Hello everyone watching at home, this is League Zero press conference with Tokyo Drifters. Left to right, top to bottom, I have a Capella, Average, myself, Apple, and RMM, and Asset just joined. So for our first question, I want to ask all of you, what do you guys think your biggest factor for your 7-0 success in the regular season was? Hmm. Our immense ability to have a good coach. Basically, so we were all kind of horseshit at the start, well, besides like Keith and Asa. But then Aka was like, okay, this is how you play the video game. And he learned, and then we basically just got better every week. And that's how we did so good. So it was mainly the like, coaches? I feel like the main thing was like, the only people that I feel like could have beaten us was us. Oh, I feel like that kind of happened. It's like, a, the only reason that we would lose, or like lose maps, is if we just stopped, like, we just went eight boring and like, play differently than we do normally. But once we got back on track, we, we pulled back. Yeah, makes sense. So how did you guys manage to like consistently get wins that were even close, like 3-1s, 3-2s, but you guys kept managing to pull out in the end? Did you guys just have someone there that was constantly reassuring that it was going to be okay, or did you guys just manage to play as a team and always come up in the clutch moments? Uh, yeah, cool. okay. I was just going to say, um, a lot of it was just, it was half and half of someone always being there to cheer us up. Because in our first game, when we were down real bad, it was actually Platt. He came back from the grave and was all happy and stuff. And that kind of just drove all of us to actually do good. But um, when it's not someone being really bright and optimistic, it's usually Asa or Peep or um, even like Ranter just popping off for like a fight or two. And that just puts us back into this one, I think. Yeah, that makes sense. Um... Yeah, I'm just going to agree with Apple, because I feel like a lot of us, especially after the first game, kind of understood that, like, we can bring games back even when we think we can't. So I feel like, um, and we were all kind of, like, understood what was going wrong a lot of the time. So, like, that brings back to, like, the only people that could beat us was us. Um, so, yeah, I feel like we were all understood what was going wrong, and then we just fixed it and made it back. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the uh, the maps that we did lose or the closer series was like us. We, uh, average is completely right. We beat ourselves up a, a little bit. Maybe we got too over, uh, overconfident. And then normally it was at the reassuring us and or just telling us to stop being stupid. And then we just get back on track. Yeah. I'd say that the majority of our map losses. Makes sense. Yeah. Did you guys have any in-game leader that always kept things under control, or was it just kind of everyone chipping in and making sure everyone everything sailed smoothly? Um, definitely everyone. Everyone, everyone, everyone played their part in, you know, voicing their opinion. Or we would, we would always have, have at least one person on the team that was trying to keep everyone's mentality together. together. And then, and then if, if all else failed, it was at the power that would bring us back to where we were before. Um. Apple was a very good in-game leader. We got, like, um, I brought some positivity sometimes, Plot did, Rancher did, really everyone played a part in keeping the mentals up in-game. Yeah, that's really great to hear. Alright, now that we have more people here, um, I believe during the regular season, Ranter's account got suspended for a little while. How did you guys manage to overcome the adversity of having such a crucial member suspended and gone for a few games? Definitely good. We just said no. We just said no to losing. If I can be honest with you, we got very, we were very fortunate um, that the meta at the time fit our sub zero pool. Uh, if you don't know, it was Dempsey's a known known uh, Zen one trick. Um, and, and lucky for us, that like a week or two that Rancher was gone, we had a lot of uh, Zen comps that were very playable. Uh, so that, that did it. A bit of luck came in in clutch for us, uh, but also you know, Dempsey being in for us as a, as a sub uh, really helped us out. Yeah, Dempsey shit on Victor. Dempsey absolutely destroyed Victor. I will say that. 
He, he literally, he demolished him. I kid you not. Well, Sky, Victor went to like kill him three times or something. And every time he just finished him off with a headshot. He, he's actually just bonkers. In, in that game, it's like the super clip where he walks up into the stream room, slaps his penis on the table, and then he just popped off. And that was the game. Nice, nice. All right. Next question. What was your guys' favorite or most memorable game from the season? Definitely the epic game. I don't think anyone here is gonna disagree with that. Mm -hmm. I really like the flash game. It's because we kind of slapped him silly when we were talking so much. At the game, we went down to the and we just like, and then we just like. I mean, personally, personally it's the bar game, game, but team wise, was the epic game. Which uh, one? Personally, I just. The last one. Like, not the last one. The week 10 bar game. The week 8 one. Yeah, per personally, I just like the Vertigo game, because it's literally the only game I played, and I got a lot of mercy pull on it, so. That's good. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's not yeah. a game, but it's a swear moment. When, um, oh my god, <laughs> when Flats Mike uh, was fucking, he, what is it called? He put it in an auto tune. He put it in an auto tune. Auto -tune. Auto -tune. <laughs> and he was calling mid fight with auto tune Mike. Uh, that, was a, that was a great one. Nice, nice, yeah. Yeah, your team definitely seemed yeah, like that. This... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, I was gonna say, you had this one map on Junker Town. Where we went fucking and died, and all the <laughs> literally destroyed everything, dude. I got like, no, no, we went dive with me on the monkey and Apple on the diva. Dude, we went it went hard, bro. It was the game she died as well. The OG it was, died. Yeah, it was the OG she died. It was, so, it was so, it was too powerful. We couldn't pull it out against Bark because we didn't want to destroy them until that bad, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that sounds fun. So, do you guys think that your like kind of lighthearted attitude and playing for fun attitude helped you guys win more games in the season? I don't say we were lighthearted. We we're definitely still competitive. I like, in, like, like definitely in scrims. Like, I remember we would always get frustrated at each other because we started like having a bad result, but then we like going back into mode, either acapella or us. Or, like, like somebody, somebody would get mad and we'll get, get back, back into, into it eventually. eventually. So, so, no, we were definitely, definitely competitive, competitive, but we, we just had, like, we, we mixed it in, that makes sense. sense. Yeah, yeah, I get you. I think I understand. Yeah, I mean, the, I, the idea of having fun while playing did help us a lot. Like, um, again, in the first Epi game, but it basically told us, Yo, yeah, like, guys, let's start having fun. fun. That's, that's how we're gonna win. win. And so, so we just, we kind of started trying to have fun with the game. We, Shift the, kind of shift the nerves off. So there are times like that where having fun really did help with the result. But there has to be a balance between that and the competitive body. So. I feel like it was a good mix. Because like when we originally met um, in the first scrim, I feel like we got, uh, like, got along well with each other. So I feel like it wasn't necessarily us like not taking it seriously. It was just us like... Uh, like the fact, the fact that, that we were we melded, we melded so well together that we were able to be more relaxed and not like freak out and so we were able to be more calm and like be able to bring the games back like the epic game. First time I had a panic first time I had a panic attack because my mic was muted the whole time and I couldn't unmute it because I had a ball. <laughs> so, <laughs> I can't go up on the edge. I can't go up on the edge. Let's be real. We owe all of our success to Dempsey's Mario Kart gameplay. A hundred percent. Drew, the worst Drew, Mario is... Kart gameplay you can ever see. Dude, he lost to a freaking easy baby peach. No, it was baby Daisy. It was baby Daisy. He, he, he lost to a child. Like, oh my goodness. It's insane, you know? <laughs> All right, and then, so despite a great regular season, you guys did not have the best playoff runs. What do you think? Like, what what factors do you think occurred for you guys to have not such a great playoff run? Pass change. Um, yeah, we had a very unfortunate timing with the uh, patch changing, and like our scrims during that week, we literally scrimmed zero overall teams, 
everyone was still running old meta, so I don't think we were really prepared for it. Or like before, like every time there was a meta change, like I was very proud of these guys. They they, um, they adapted very very quickly, but like we didn't scrim against any brawl teams at all, and we were not prepared for their brawl at all. Uh, and then I think it was a lot of nerves um, as well. You know, I, like I've been proud of how they had, uh, you know, they they kind of kept their nerves like throughout the whole regular season. But I think uh, the nerves just kind of got the better of us uh, at the end of the season, the playoffs. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. I think you know, going in as the number one seed team, but and you know, needing to hold up to what the league kind of expected of us. We were all really nervous about making a wrong decision. And in that crucial kind of one game where you had the decision, okay, are we going to play old meta or are we going to try to mirror the brawl? I think because we were too, we were too nervous to make the decision to stick to what we knew, we tried to adapt and that was the wrong choice at the time. So I think nerves was the biggest contribution to just losing a, against Bark in general. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right. So going back to the very beginning, this is, I guess, more towards Ranter, but anyone can answer it if they want. Um, what was your guys' plan going into the draft, and your plan the very few, the very first days after you guys were drafted together? Uh, so the funny thing about that was I was like a captain, like with a week left in the draft because a DC got promoted to expert. So uh, we really like, didn't have a plan. plan. It was more so like, I brought, like, so, so when a DC got, got taken, I was like, okay, I'll bring in a friend. So I just got a plan off that. And then Apple, Apple complained, complained that he wasn't getting any scouting time, and we were desperate for our main tank. So I just should have said, yo, Apple, I'll draft you. You're trying to chill, so I'll just take you. So I got a main support and a main take off that. Because we already knew we wanted average in Azza and Peep. So all we really needed was the flex support, main tank, and main support. I was a flex support captain, so that's covered. We had the main tank covered, then we got the main support covered off that. That was how we came up with starting six. And backup, we kind of just came up with that during draft day. We saw like who was available, we just took off that. Yeah, that's that's pretty great that you guys managed to draft a team with such good chemistry, even with such a limited time for preparing. And then first beat kind of with someone like this. Yeah, we we're, we're very fortunate. Um, yeah, you know, some of these guys have played together before. Um, so like we, we kind of had a, we had like a little brainstorming thing like me, Arrow, and Ranter. Uh, we kind of like figured out the best like draft order and stuff like that. So I think that definitely helped us get exactly who we wanted as well. Um, you know, because it is better to have like even though it is a draft league, it is better to have people who have you know that uh, previous synergy. Uh, so that's kind of what we we're shooting for. Yeah, makes sense. Do you guys think you were able to continue your um? Synergy and your monumental uh, first win into wins throughout the season. I mean, to be quite frank, I've never told you the plan about this. I don't know how this team went undefeated. I love it on the death, but think about it, like I was like, this is shocking how we're like seven and zero, whatever. Because we, I think a lot of it was also awesome map five. Yeah, the amount of map five. Map five I think a lot of it was luck as well. I'm not saying we're bad. But, like think about like this: we didn't play Casey with their full team. Flatchat had lag issues, and Dempsey went monster that game. He barely escaped Powerhouse, and then he barely escaped the Bark game with lag issues again. Like, a lot of times we're luck, we're on our side, but I'm not discrediting our skill. I do think we did, like, destroy some series. Like, the Epi game, I think that took skill, because it takes, it's like a lot. You go down 2-0, and then make a comeback and reverse sweep like that. Just think it was a mixture of skill and luck, if that makes sense. I think us having that first map 5, kind of set us up so when we went into another map five scenario we'd be more prepared than other teams because if we had the most map five they weren't really prepping that map as hard as we were like we saw we would spin it like probably twice every week just trying to get it in just in case we went to that most teams really didn't try to focus on that map would focus on uh, the first couple maps yeah that's pretty funny i was actually about to ask because i think you guys won three map fives right so I was about to ask, um, um, what was the factor? Like, wh why do you think you guys won all of the map fives you played? But that actually makes a lot of sense. They guys scrimmed on it just to be uh, safe. Uh, usually it's a pop-off moment or a consistency moment. Like, things start to click. Like, in the Epic game, things started to click. Like, we understood what we need to do. We started executing off that. Things started to click. The other series, it was usually, like, pop-off modes. Like, 
During the Bart game, me and Azra had a really good game. That's why I really enjoyed the Bart game. Because I wanted to prove a point that I was going to come back strong and that I wasn't like going to be washed going in suspended. And I also wanted to prove a point to Acapella because like the week before he said Dempsey was another Zen. So I just started hard grinding Zen and I had a really good Zen game. So I was really happy for that. Which is, probably which is, everything started to. Granted, has died. Finally, he is dead. <laughs> yeah, but that makes sense. It's it's always nice when everything just comes in place and the team just figures things out. I've definitely felt that before on Clash at Season 1. Alright, and then... If you guys could change one thing about this season, what would you change? Like, the way you, like, the way you guys scrimmed, um, when you guys showed up to practice, how you played in matches, anything? Uh, well... Not losing playoffs would have been a pretty good start, but also <laughs> um, more team bonding. Because usually after scrims, everyone would just log off, and it'd be like me, average, and us, uh, and then Slaney when she got on just talking for like two hours afterwards. So like, if we were more like chill, you know. I uh, yeah, I think like obviously I'm not a player, so I can't really comment on that. But if like one thing I that I could have done is maybe you know. Try to like give them a little bit more nudges to like play the game a little bit more, because uh, like, no offense, these guys they're good, but like um, a lot of them didn't really play the game all that much outside of scrims. So it kind of led to you know we're you know we were kind of stagnating. Um, but I mean you know we we still performed well. I think I think it was just you know if, if we got in that little bit of extra time, uh, I think you know we could have gone above and beyond and uh, potentially won the whole thing. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Wait, were you going to say something, Apple? Sorry. I was going to say if the bracket was double elimination, we would have won 100%. I 100% believe that. I think it was just that one game. They were just better. Like, it was literally just that one game. I, I, Every other game we proved it. If it was a double elimination bracket, we would have learned and literally swept the floor with every other team. Um, I think we would have made grants at least. I don't know if we would have won by at least grants. I think we would have won. The only team I would actually like worried about then, actually I would have worried about everybody, but I would have been a little bit more scared about KC, just because they had a really strong roster going into that. But um, I think we would have won just based off of us improving literally every week. I mean, yeah, I kind of, at least I believe that even at the end of the season when we lost to Barkley, we were still the best team, but sometimes the best team is, you know, things still choke. It's not like we were unbeatable. We were just... Uh, one of the best teams, and um, I guess those, that kind of team will fall apart eventually, no matter how like you know how many games you win. You know the shock; they won't win every single game, even if they are the best team. So I think that, unfortunately, we lost to Bark in semifinals instead of Week Ten. Yeah, it makes sense. Sometimes single elimination brackets can be very cruel because. Uh, if there's a, there's an element of randomness to it for sure. I agree. All right, last yeah. question here: Which uh, team or teams did you guys have the most fun playing against, or surprised you the most? Either one. Powerhouse. Powerhouse. <laughs> Holy shit, they were crazy. Uh, most most fun playing against, honestly, was Epi, just because of all all the stops they pulled and like how much they put up a fight throughout the series, and like just really just playing it was fun, and then like. Most surprised, I guess, I guess could say was, I mean, Bark because they were running double main support with that Zen and they were still able to win things, so. I don't know, I still think it's week one and week ten for me, because week one, oh god. I don't think we're ever going to forget that series of the team of week one. Week one is like the most intense series I think I've played in a while. Which was that? That was Epi, week one. The Matt oh, Lyle first week. Oh, uh, that, that was that, okay. And then week 10 for me, it was just a more of a personal game. Like, it was more like I wanted to prove a point, and I think I did really well on that. Yeah, it was definitely really fun to watch you, you know, coming back from being suspended and still popping off in game 10. It was, it was very nice. Good comeback story. Alright, I think that is all the, all the questions that I have prepared, and we're nearing the 20 minute mark, so... Unless you guys have anything else to say, or want me to ask any more questions, I think we can wrap it up soon. 
Up to you. Um, I don't have much to say. I have one thing. Yeah, sure. Randy Chase is going to be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. You smell bad. <laughs> wow. Toxic. Wait, I want to ask Akko something. Akko, what's your YouTube and Twitch? Oh my god. You can find me at twitch.tv slash Akakala underscore OW. I think I will subscribe right now. Alright, be sure to <laughs> give him a follow and <laughs> put that out the way. I think I'll end the recording. Thank you everyone for watching. It was very fun and I'll see you guys next time.